Oliver. Congratulations, sir. So this is, I believe, the second time you've made a film about a high-profile public figure. Uh, yes. This one is way more pleasant. What's the appeal? What's the attraction of a biopic? Uh, well, the attraction here was that it is not a biopic, but uh, uh, if you will, old-fashioned universal love story about a princess, the most famous woman in the world, falling in love with a, as you say, common man. And I didn't believe what I was reading because I had no idea about this story. And uh, the more I did my research on Diana, the more I got fascinated because she was everything that I didn't know about, I didn't expect. It's a fairly unknown period in her life. How was that to direct? How was it sort of... How, why, what was the appeal of that particular period? Because there's a lot happening in these two years. It's like she underwent a transformation. I believe the reason for that was that love that she found, finally found, that she was looking for her life long. And she, in a way, reinvented herself. She became stronger, more focused. She became like a real stateswoman, if you will. The landmine campaign, they, they, there were various very influential people, initiatives who tried to stop the landmines. They didn't succeed for 20 years. She went to Angola and within three days changed everything. So she's basically the first one in history using fame to do good. I mean, there's more people who do that now, but she invented that. Yes. And all that is sort of forgotten over a yacht in the Mediterranean, paparazzi flying in with helicopters in and out and all that. And that was another reason for, for my saying this story has got to be told because nobody seems to know it. Marvellous. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.